Hey guys, Sam here, and uh, today I'm going to show you something which I wanted to know when I first started off in Cinema 4D, and it is just pretty much how to make an intro, that's all I wanted to know. So uh, today I'm going to show you how to make probably the basic, most basic intro uh, using camera movement, uh, texture, and I mean, uh, put materials on, just the whole basics. So um, I'm not going to tell you about all like all about the program. I'm just gonna set right into the uh, tutorial. So first, you want to click this light button here, drag down, and go to the floor. And that immediately creates a somewhere where we could uh, work on. And I just want to click the quick render button, which uh, just gives me a very quick render. And uh, as you can see, the floor goes on forever until it hits the sort of like sky at the back. So. Um, the, there's two ways of putting, um, bringing in text. There is going to the splines, going to text, and then um, going to I can't remember to do this object, and then push like sound or something, and then bring down a like stupid nerves and just dropping it in. And that's easy way to create text. But uh, today I'm going to use MoviGraph text. So click this button here, go into the text object and push the align to middle and for the purposes, purpose of this tutorial I was going to put thanks for 4k because I just got 4k the other day and push this font button down here to change the font I'm just going to put I don't know bank gothic mdbt and that's a pretty nice font I'm going to change the depth to around about 60 and as you can see, the depth makes uh, I can't know, I don't know. It makes it the, t the text look deeper, uh, forward and backwards. So I'm gonna put it around about there, and that's it for the text. So now you want to import some lights. Otherwise, if you render this now, it will be lit up, but uh, not properly. So you want to drag on this button again and push the light. You want to bring it up a little bit. You want to click this button here. Go to array drop the light into the array like hold down until you see it going a uh, little arrow going downwards as you can see it's now defaulted back to the floor so you want to lift this up and you just want to go to radius and put at least around about uh, 1000 yeah and then you want to go back to the light and you want to turn it down to around about I don't know 50 and I'm actually going to put this around about 1500 meters which is in Cinema 4D. I'm just going to lift this up a little bit, um, close this up, uh, hold down Control, and then just uh, go down so it creates a copy of it. And I'm going to bring this one down. Is that down? Yeah, that's down. Open the back up, and I'm just going to drop down the light a little bit more because that's pretty damn high. And do a quick render and uh, the scene is nicely lit up and now we want to click down here double click and it creates a material so by double clicking in this box anywhere and you double click on the material you just made go to colour go to the colour you want to choose and I'm going to go for a nice blue which I always go for and uh, I'm just going to put a bit of reflection on it and I'm going to turn this reflection right down go to texture the texture and then go f to for now and then turn this about to I don't know twelve percent and then turn up the blurriness actually now I want to put that to twenty six percent turn up the blurriness which will uh, increase rendering time but uh doesn't really matter because I'm not rendering <laughs> and do another quick render of that I'm actually gonna shorten down the text a little bit I'm just gonna put V dubs just so looks just a bit more smaller and there we go and now I'm going to import a camera which uh, we're going to do all the camera movements so as you can see right now um, the camera's just there and you can move it around but we're not the camera so to become the camera you can either push this button here which uh, now will be the camera if I zoom out you can't see the camera anymore because we are the camera or you can go to camera scene camera camera which also does the same thing so uh, I'm just going to. Why are there two B's in my name? I just noticed that. <laughs> um, so uh, now I'm just going to do a pretty nice simple motion where I just go round here and round the text. 
and um, to do this I just want to make sure my uh, rendering settings by clicking this button here is the output is 1280 by 720 which is YouTube HD so now I want to click camera I want to get into the position where I'm going to start in and I'm going to change the frames because by the way 90 frames is 3 seconds so that's a little bit of help there I'm changing to around about 120 frames, I'm not going to make this a long intro. I'm going right to the beginning by clicking this button here, which jumps right to the beginning. Uh, just move it around a little bit, so I want to start this side. Click this button here, which is the auto keyframing button, and then click on my camera, and click this button to start the first keyframe. And I want to go around about, I don't know, 75, and I'm just going to move myself around, round, down. So I want to move myself around the text. I'm actually going to lift myself up a little bit, look down, move it down a little bit there, and I'm just, as you can notice, it is creating another keyframe without me clicking this button. So, uh, at the beginning, we start here, and then as we move along, we just move around the text, fanboys, and um, we just finish off right there. So, uh, let's say at 90 frames, I want it to zoom in a little bit. So, I just zoom in zoom in a little bit keeping it in the frames and um, if you want to know like where uh, the camera or the I don't know the size of the uh, video is going to end is these like grey lines here these this grey box here this grey box here they won't be in the picture so don't worry about them so if I just go back and push play as you can see it moves around the text and then zooms in right at the end I'm going to put this around about 200 frames and um, this is looking pretty sexy I have to admit and then I want to push this uh, rendering setting button and um, this is pretty advanced to be honest but <clears throat> if your lights, I don't know what this uh, effect is for but uh, I'm going to put global illumination which uh, makes, I don't know, it just makes the whole scene lighter with the light, I don't know what it does but I'm just going to keep that default setting and just can't be bothered to it's like one lower, but oh, I really can't be bothered. Um, that's your problem. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to turn off the auto keyframe because if we move the camera now, it won't keyframe itself. But if we still had the uh, auto keyframing, we couldn't move this camera freely. So if I do a quick render now, you might see it takes a little bit longer because we've got global illuminations, and um, it looks pretty cool actually. So uh, I'm just going to be back when this is rendered. So, as you can see, it's rendered, it only took 31 seconds. Um, it looks pretty nice. So, if I move the camera a little bit, it turns off the render. And, um, it took a little while to render. So, right now, before we, uh, until we start rendering the final, I'm just going to turn it off. It's not going to remove it, it's just going to turn it off so I can't see it. So, now I want to go to effects, ambient occlusion, I think it's called. And we'll turn the contrast around about. 30, I'm going to put the axis to around about 50, I oh, know, um, this is something I heard a long time ago, I don't really use this much, but uh, it creates some nice simple shadows, you can see at the bottom there, well the other way to create some nice simple shadows is go to probably the top set of lights, and go to shadow, soft, or area, um, I'm just going to just put area, and then as you can see it creates some nice big long shadows and that looks pretty nice so now we'll turn on global illuminations It'll probably not needed but uh, that's just a handy little tip if you do need it if you've got some very small lights or something uh, I'm not going to use any more rendering effects I'm just going to go to the save tab I'm going to go to the file and I'm going to push this button here and um, I'm going to load this up a little bit I'm just going to go to the top I'm just going to go to my desktop I'm going to name it uh, Sam is the best and I'm gonna put the format to QuickTime not AVI, QuickTime is better quality I'm gonna go to options just to keep that all to default but uh, actually no you need to put the quality to best obviously and um, that's it for the render uh, saving settings you wanna go to output make sure it's set to all frames 
um, you want to put it the width and the height to 1280 by 720 resolution to 72 just keep it as default uh, the general make sure it's on full render otherwise it won't render properly options 626 at the end here and uh, that's it for the rendering settings so um, as you can see now it just soups in nice basic intro um, make for anyone put in Sony Vegas put some uh, music beside it and uh, you can you can color the floor just by dropping it on let me see I want to make it to be green actually no yellow that's what came out let's put a more orange ready color and then drop it on and as you can see the floor is now uh, red. It's going to take a long time to render now, but um, the way you do the final render is by clicking this button and it brings up this picture viewer and as you can see this is the timeline at the bottom uh, this is how many, how what percent of uh, the frame is rendered and it renders it frame by frame by frame so that could take up to 3, 2, I don't know, it depends how fast your computer is so yeah guys, see ya, bye whenever this is subscribe <laughs>